Hey guys, welcome to Envision Prototypes, I'm Nick. And next to me here, we've got the 51 Ford that we dragged out of a farmer's field. But it didn't look exactly like this. Here's a little video to show what I'm talking about. We can use this to do this. There we go, fired right up, and it sounds strong. A guy can dream, right? What do you think? Peel the body off, mount this over top, away we go. What beats having paddle shifters in a hot rod? I don't know, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I hope you guys join us on this journey. So as you can see, the car was really, really rough. Didn't have any floors in it when we got it. Somebody had cut them out. Uh, the body panels were mismatched. Panels came from different years of Ford, I think a 49 and a 51. The hood was caved in. Bottom rockers, they were gone. There was nothing left. So we got a lead on the car. A guy gave me a call and said, we got a 51 Ford, it's gonna be scrapped. If you want it, come and get it. I love these old cars. You know, it's, it's a shame not to rescue them. So hooked up the trailer, hightailed it down there and dragged the car up and brought it back here to the shop where it sat for about a year and I have to think about what we were going to do with the car. There were many options we could have done. We could have resto modded it, brought it back to original, or did what you saw, we did. And that was to do a body swap over Infiniti G35 XS sport model chassis. The S is the key, because the car's got paddle shifters. It's a really nice touch. Yeah, you could spend the time and the dollars and the, you know, months and years in recreating the original 51 Ford, but we wanted to have a bit of fun with it. So to play off that sport theme I'm talking about, we had to kind of stylize and smooth things out and streamline the 51 Ford. Originally, the roof was a lot higher, about three inches higher. And we chopped it down, but not in a typical fashion where guys will cut the posts, drop the roof down. We took and laid that front windshield back. We heated the bottom A pillars up, the top pillars up, and laid it back. To give it a streamlined look. At the back there, to get rid of that hump, I'll show you all this when we, when we do a little walk around. To get rid of that hump in the back, we actually brought the rear window forward and blended everything together. And you look at it now, it doesn't look like anything was done. It almost looks original, unless you park it next to a 51 Ford, then you'll see the changes. So I was thinking of doing that, but I don't have a line on it, another original 51 Ford. So I might do some photo comparisons along the way when I do the walk around later on. That was the start of all the other mods, or the influence of all the other mods for the car. Everything else was basically smoothed out. We incorporated Infiniti the G35 handles to work with all the electronics. So this is essentially a modern car in 51 Ford clothing. Now a lot of you guys are asking, what color are you gonna paint this car? Well, she's green. I chose this color. It's a custom mix called Field of Greens. We came up with this ourselves, and it pays homage to where we picked the car up. There's a farmer's field. So we basically go from a darker green at the bottom and fade up to more of a grass green on top on all the highlights. And when the sun comes around a little bit more, it's not too bad right now, but when the sun comes around a little more, it's really gonna pop. It's a metallic paint, and over the soft highlight areas, it's really gonna jump out nice. So anyway, um, there's one thing I want to do that's left to do that I wanted to include you guys in before we do the walk around and that is on the grill there's two little pieces two little whiskers I'm gonna call them that we want to install to kind of mimic a Shelby Mustang front end yes a Shelby Mustang this is what I mentioned way back months ago when we were planning the stages out in our very first video we're gonna sportify that front end the front sheet metal since this is a Ford and I love Mustangs we're gonna give that front end a Mustang feel to it. I wanted to give that front end kind of a Mustang feel to it. I love Mustangs and going with the concept theme, I wanted to kind of incorporate the Mustang grill into the front. It's not gonna be exactly a Mustang, but it has a, a hint of Mustang to it. We restore cars every day, bring them back to original or do resto mods, but to do something where we have full freedom because it's my, my dad's car now, we wanted to have some fun with it. 
It was a lot of work. Uh, this last week was just incredibly insane just to get it to this stage. There are a few little things we need to address yet, and that'll probably be done in the winter time. But right now, I would say it's 97.21% done. I'm not ashamed to drive it to a show and have people enjoy the car. So as we're going along with the build, a lot of viewers were giving us name suggestions for the car. We have chosen a name. We're going to reveal it at the end of the video. In the meantime, uh, I've got a list here of a number of suggestions that people gave us. Uh, Bill mentioned infinite possibilities. Then we had uh, Dean with Fordinity, Bipolar, two different vehicles. Uh, that was by GOB. Um, Infinity in a Shoebox by Riven. Um, there's other ones here. Shusan, I think it's a Japanese twist. Throw threw that out there. Rock gave us a name. Infinite Ford. A lot of great suggestions. We did decide on a name after the car was painted, after looking at the curves of the car. This is no longer a very flat, straight shoebox, as you're gonna see. Uh, you might not see it from your perspective right now, but it, it has some interesting characteristics that we've given it to accommodate the wider Infinity chassis. So let's go make up those pieces. The sun is coming around, happens this time of day. But once we get them installed, bring you guys in, do a walk around, and show you the features of the car. And hopefully, we will, take it for a drive. I know Joe is really excited to jump in that passenger seat. I'm sure if he had it his way, he'd be in the driver's seat, but uh, it doesn't work that way on YouTube. So passenger seat, next best thing, Joe. All right, so we're gonna take a few minutes and whip up those little whiskers I was talking about earlier for the front of the grill. We created a bit of a template here. So that's the driver's side piece. It's gonna sit, uh, let's see, the hood comes down like that. It's gonna sit like this, bit of an angle. I've translated all the dimensions onto a strip of uh, sheet metal. And uh, we're just gonna take and cut this out. I'm gonna bend it up as one length, just toss it in the brake, bend it up to the profile I want, and then we'll take and cut it in half. That way both pieces are consistent with, consistent, consistent in all ways, um, all the angles. Uh, if we try bending up two separate pieces, might not work out too well. It'll take a little bit longer. Now, before I go bending this up, I'm gonna explain what we're gonna do. We'll take and weld two nuts in that correspond to the holes in the mesh. So we can reach in with it faster and just bolt it in from behind. That way you don't see anything on the front. And uh, it's a really simple way of doing it and it's effective. Now prior to bending up the actual piece, I'm just gonna whip up a piece of cardboard here. And it's going to just, I wanna test the profile, make sure it looks good. I've got a vision in my head of what I want it to look like, but uh, just in case, we'll do a sample test piece here. Kind of like that. Now it's cardboard, so there's a lot more spring back than sheet metal, but we're gonna have something like this. It's kind of open up a bit. Then the back side will have our nuts. This will be cut back on an angle like that. I'm not gonna bother, but that's essentially what we're after. The main face is a narrow line, and as it goes back half an inch, it'll open up a bit. So I like the way that looks. Let's bend this up. Okay, here we go. Bend number one. We can always touch it up a little bit afterwards. And bend number two. Uh, it's a little bit too open yet. Let's close it up a little bit more. I don't want a very sharp crease, so I've taken and back this top bending edge rearward a little bit, just to soften things up. We don't want a sharp crease. Nice soft radius, just like that, see that? So we'll adjust his bottom leg, bring it up a little more. Make sure we're on the line. And there we have it. Always look at saving space, creating more bench space. I 
All right, so we've got our little channels here. I've got the marks indicating where we need to put the nuts so that we can bolt it in from the back side of the grill. And as for the nuts, it can be small quarter inch nuts that I'm going to use a bolt to hold instead of my fingers. I guess that's a smart thing to do. Down in the bottom of the root like that of the channel, put a tack on each side of the nut, call it done. Okay, watch your eyes. Let's get the bolt out before it gets too hot. We can't handle it. See now we got some splatter on that bolt, but it really doesn't matter. We've saved the nuts, because if you get splatter in the nut, uh, it kind of wrecks it. Okay, there we go. Now, we can take and clean that up a little bit. It's not too bad, a little bit of a burr there. You should let this cool off a bit. And uh, we'll get a coat of primer on these. They're going to be painted the same color as that center bar on the front of the car. Just an accent. They go like that. Okay, these are going to be the bolts. They're truss head bolt, nice wide face uh, head on it so that it comes in from the back of the grill and we can do them up nice and snug. And this bolt here, we're going to save it for next time. So cooled off a little bit, now we can take and wipe them off with a bit of degreaser. Now you might think that the heat burnt off whatever oil or residue was on these. Always wash your panels prior to sanding them. Because you don't want to, when you're sanding it, you don't want to push the oil deeper into the, into the metal. So you basically got to wash it until your towel comes clean. That's Sharpie, so we're just going to wash it until it comes clean, flip it around. Yuck. Towels aren't made like they used to be. You want to wash your metal, or the surface that you're preparing for paint, until there is absolutely no residue coming off. That way you're pretty much guaranteed to have a, a surface that adheres to the paint, or the paint that adheres to the surface. Yeah, that sounds better. Good. Now I've got a video of preparing sheet metal panels for primer, epoxy primer. Click that card up there, it'll take you there. I think that's going to be it. Okay, so the panels or these pieces are all clean and we can go ahead and sand them. This is just 22 gauge sheet metal. You don't need anything too heavy because it's not a load bearing part. There we go. Now you might notice I'm not using my bare hands to handle these parts at this point. You don't want any oil off your hands or wherever or the old mechanics gloves I was using earlier to transfer any grease or oil onto these pieces. So that's ready for primer and so is that. We'll just do it right here. It's not a big piece. Splash a bit of epoxy primer onto them. So here are our freshly primer pieces. I've got some 400 grit. I'm just going to block sand them out. Just really gentle. There shouldn't be much body work involved in these pieces because they're just sheet metal bent in the form of a channel. Yeah, I should be wearing a mask when I'm sanding this out, but they're just small pieces. You should wear a mask. That's the right thing to do. So with these pieces, I forgot to mention that I put down a coat of epoxy and then I put a coat of urethane primer, 2K primer, right over top of that. 
And now we're just blocking out the urethane primer. So it's usually epoxy, followed by high build, followed by urethane two-part primer. And if you're block sanding, you should be using a block. Here I'm using my finger. You're never gonna tell on something this small. We're not going for the Riddler with this car. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna blow these pieces off, wipe them down with degreaser because I was touching them with my fingers. And I'll give them a coat of base, followed by a coat of clear coat, done. All right guys, we got those two pieces fixed in place. We'll get you around a little bit later on, get a close up view of that. Uh, I wanna see this color. The sun's out, bouncing off the side of the car and it just pops, look at that. You know, I'm not sure if you guys can catch it on your uh, tablets or on your TVs or cell phones, but in person it's just jumping. You know, that metallic is just the right amount. It's not overly done. Got the fade coming up from the bottom and all these highlights are just screaming gorgeous. I'm really in love with the car. I love the way, the way it came out. And I just want to say that even though this car was built on YouTube, it's not a YouTube car in the sense that we build it three quarters, 50% of the way through, park it and stick it out behind the shop. We finish them. Let's get uh, you guys off the tripod, go around the car and show you some of the features. Some are more obvious than others, but I'll go around and kind of describe everything we did for those who just tuned in and just checking out this beautiful car. All right, let's get in on that front fender and check out the paint. Sun bouncing off that highlight, just, it's stunning. With the metallic, it's just the right amount of metallic just to give the car with all its subtle curves a really kind of a glowing look. It's not too harsh. And with the fade, that fade minimizes the height of the sides. So I guess we can start with the roof because that's what really initiated all the changes on the body. That's what really started it all. So you can see, we laid that windshield back two inches streamlining the whole roof. Now we didn't cut anything in here. It all stayed intact. We just heated up those posts and moved it all back. And if we compare an original before we started to now, you can see the difference. So all of our work was done back here. And you really can't tell that anything was done. Now, the other thing, if you compare an original to what we have, this area over the door on an original 51 or 54 shoebox Ford, actually went up to a point and then came down and around. Well, we eliminated that point so that we can have a nice smooth area here on the side. Now you might see a bit of a thing right there and that happened after we installed the seal. It's a little bit thick, so a new one is on its way and we'll get that installed and that'll correct that little, that little joint, the offset. As for the trim, wraps all the way around the glass kind of gives it a border and once it gets tinted it'll really hide that post right there. This is just clean straight glass right now. We haven't gotten it tinted. So, you know, it was a mad thrash just to get it to this point so we can start enjoying the car. So let's move to the front. Now I was talking about this highlight over here. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, probably not, unless you had another 50 Ford part next to it. We extended these fenders ahead two inches to make everything work out inside. And it looks right. That hood didn't do anything to the hood. 
except repair a bunch of dents and stuff that was caved in on, yeah, in on it. We took these side areas here and pulled them ahead to minimize that point, the peak. Just streamlining and smoothing and making things a little more subtle. Like I said, if you park this next to a 51 Ford, you'll see the differences, but on its own, it almost looks stock. These front fender arches, we have to open them up a little bit. You used to come back a bit of an angle. It gives it a forward motion by re-arching these fenders the way we did. Now, this car never came with any bumpers or any trim or anything for the front, except for the center portion, which was for a V8 50 Ford. So we had to recreate a brand new fascia for the bottom, as well as that Nerf bar. And if we didn't add that Nerf bar, it would look large. But as you can see with that Nerf bar, it splits it. And those two little whiskers, as I like to call them, it kind of breaks up this, this grill opening. In this opening here and there, I'll show you later, there are intakes for the air boxes. The front license plate, always a difficult thing to locate on the front of a car here in Canada or in Ontario, but uh, we need a front license plate. That's where you positioned it and it reaches up inside with a bracket and mounts to the factory bumper. Not the Nerf bar, but the bumper in behind the grill that you don't really see. So that worked out quite well, nice and solid. We French the headlights, made up our own rings because the original Ford rings that bolted on, they stuck out too far. And now if you want to take and adjust your headlights, you turn your wheels one way or the other, remove the liner of course, you have a wheel liner inside, go front and back, one piece, all original from the Infinity. Uh, you pull that out and those screws have been flipped around in such a way that you can access the three adjustment screws from inside the fender well, adjust the headlights. These headlights, basically seven inch headlights that uh, we incorporated into the front of this car. They have um, driving light as well as an amber turn signal worked into them. So we didn't have to add any other signals on the front. The graphics on the side, again, give the car length. Because if we just kept everything green, <laughs> it'd be a lot of green. So wanted to break it up a bit, give it a splash of color inside on those calipers. The rims painted charcoal, same as the graphics, same as the front nerve bar, hood trim, and trim around the side glass. And the front windshield, we actually enlarged it. Got rid of the rubber molding that was around the perimeter and eliminated that center chrome piece. Just to give it a clean look. Yeah, we could have perhaps gotten a windshield fabricated and bent. Given the timeline, cutting flat glass was a lot simpler a lot more effective, cost effective. Got the wipers, need that here as well to pass the safety. They kind of frown upon rain -X. Those mirrors are older Chevy mirrors that we incorporated them. They're sitting on the shelf doing nothing. They've been moved around, moved around. I said, hey, let's see what we can do with them. And it worked out quite well. They fit the car well. At least I think they do. We picked up a set of bullet ones, like the Eleanor style, a little bit too small. Even though they look sporty, they're a bit small. Now that's an infinity door handle. We kept that so that we keep all the electronics intact. So I locked the car with my fob and it's done. You don't have to worry about keys or any of that stuff. So you can get your fingers in there just enough to open the door, boom. Doesn't that close well? Going from underneath as well. Like some people are worried about a fingernails gouging up the paint. I've got no fingernails. They've been broken back, sanded back, so not too worried about that. And that's the beginning point of our trim piece and driving light signal lights that wrap all the way around the car. The top one's the driving light, and the bottom one is the uh, turn signal, which runs into the brake light in this area, which turns into the backup light, brake light, and then wraps around the other side as a turn signal. Now we do have to fine tune a couple of little things. Some adhesive has to be put into there so that gets pushed in. Yeah, so you can see the side glass looks quite well there. It flows from one to the other as almost a single pane except for the cut line. And like I said, once we get it tinted, it'll minimize the appearance of that post. So that'll happen later on. Right now we want to get it out on the street and just enjoy it for a bit. So, 
check out those highlights. You might have noticed that we eliminated the drip rail. Dad worked his magic on that and smoothed all that out. Drip rails collect garbage and pain in the butt to clean. So here we have a really smooth, clean transition from the roof to the drip rail and down. Back window molding, that's original. Didn't bother replacing it with any trim or anything. It's black, it's fine. Get the satellite antenna up there. And it worked out quite well with that, with that roof. Curvature matched. If it was any more extreme, like originally, we had like the original car, it wouldn't have worked. So, a couple more things on the interior to finish. Yeah, we got it together, but like I mentioned, it was a real push to do that, to get it done for this week. Back here, we have our license plate, obviously, and the dual exhaust, dual Magnaflow exhaust. They don't protrude too far out. It looks like they do, but look from this side here, just enough. Just enough. And you see how that rear fascia worked out? Smooth, clean, and just rolls around the back of the car. Just complements all the subtle curves, all the smooth lines on the shoe box. That trunk lid used to extend down a lot further, probably to the bottom of that license plate recess. And we uh, basically trimmed that off to incorporate those LED lights. Now, the rubber seal, brand new, so that will settle into place. Still fresh, we have to make probably a little adjustment on the latch, so that'll come down. And with our fob, we can do this. Boom. So we have some junk in the trunk, some seals that have to be installed yet on the doors, whatever knickknacks. See the trunk panels? That's all original G35 that were basically reused and blended in with the 51 there. Needs to be finished in the corners yet. And we can close the trunk. Shuts very nicely. So let's go around to the front, take a look at that grill. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And I'm gonna actually be honest with you guys, there's gonna be one more piece that we have to create later that'll take more than uh, the time we have right now. That'll go just under that hood there to finish the top of the mesh because it's just a raw edge right now. Let's see if we can pop that hood, take a look underneath the hood. See that, works out quite well. Just get your fingers in here and open the door. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. It can be a little bit tricky. And there we have it, opens up nice and smooth. So we basically fabricated a piece here that acts as a support between the fenders and blends this infinity cover piece into the front grill area. Just finishes everything off. Put the plastic keepers in place. And we've got our Infinity 51 logo designed and mounted. That's a 3.5 liter, 306 horsepower V6. Gives you lots of going power. Those are the two boxes I was talking about, the air boxes. The air gets funneled in from here, feeds those boxes, feeds the plenum. We will make up an engine cover just to cover all that stuff up, clean it up. Overall it's looking really good. And under the hood, it all looks clean and factory. See that? Get a look at the hood open. Not that you can be driving around like that, but car shows, I prefer to keep the hoods closed because it breaks up the lines of the car otherwise. Makes it look like it's in disrepair. That's it. So let's take a look at the interior. It's all stock G35 interior panels. 
with a blend, a meld between our own custom fabricated lower areas and the upper infinity areas. Garnish moldings, you might notice and say something about that, that uh, something doesn't quite look right and it doesn't because the 50 Ford or 51 Ford garnish moldings are a little bit too small. They don't uh, cover up the extended flanges that we had to add for the new windshield or that piece that we created through there. So that'll be removed later on and we'll fabricate a whole new surround just to cover all that stuff up. I was hoping, I had my fingers crossed, but as soon as I started mounting, I said, no, it's not gonna work. It worked around the top, but the sides and the bottom didn't work out. You can see our aluminum panels on the armrest area, flows from front to back, got the back seats all done up. It's a five seater. So that's pretty much it for the interior. You got those close out panels on the ends, Again, blending the body of the 51 into the Infinity. And uh, yeah, speakers, all that stuff. We did get rid of the Infinity power window controls. They were quite troublesome. There's a tweeter that has to be installed yet on either side. So these doors have to come apart. You may have heard a bit of a rattle. That's, these panels haven't been installed all the way. There are a couple little holes that I drilled into them earlier that I didn't quite match up to where I needed to be so I readjusted that. We're going to take these end caps off, fill those holes up, clean them up a little bit and just detail that part. Like I said we were moving along quite quickly with this build. Wanted to get it done for the summer so that dad can enjoy it, get it out there and just cruise with it. Little things like this, this is trivial. That would be relabeled once the print guy finishes with the new decals. So there's the door jam area there. The close out panel with the switch for the lights inside. The doors have their own lights down here. It looks like a factory car. Check out that color. That really jumps out. Incredible. It sounds nice when you close it on both sides. I'll close the other door. Oh yeah, and the fuel door. Even though this is a green machine, we still have to put gas into it. And the 51 Ford had the flipper flapper on the other side there, on the driver's side. Infinity's filler was on the passenger side. We kept all that stock. You can see, opens up premium fuel. <laughs> Even the label's right side up. And this is actually from a different vehicle. Any guesses? Didn't have to do anything with the perimeter. That's all stock. It just blended right in with the Ford's quarter panel. And there we go. Get this door opened up. Boom, closes. Everything's precise. You don't have to slam these doors. Now, if we come to the back and we look down the side of the car, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you see how the quarter panel swells out over the wheels? Infinity has a wider track base than the 51 Ford. At least the wheels are wider. So to not have to put big fender flares on to hide the wheels, we simply flare the quarters, swell the quarters, both at the back here and the front. And it's very subtle, but you can just catch how much they stick out past. Let's go from the front, take a look. Wasn't much, but like I mentioned, it had to be done. And we were gonna lower the car a bit more, but we're gonna step back and I think it looks right and it drives really well. So I'm not gonna start torching springs anytime soon. I'm kidding. Torching springs, you don't wanna be doing that. Go for the right thing, change out your coils, put in coilovers, torching, that you're looking for trouble. So in regards to swelling these quarters, we basically started at the door, jam here and came out over the rear wheel just to blend all that in. Let's come back a bit.
you see that highlight starts at the front comes all the way through the back no door handles 51's door handle was a lot higher and it actually interfered with that glowing line I mentioned a long time ago when we were doing the roof that I could have taken and removed this whole section, wheeled up a whole new piece, installed it, but it wasn't the case. Based on the time we had to do this project, simply made slices, cut and welded the metal together, and metal finished it. Hammer and dolly smoothed it out, and you can't hardly tell, if at all, that anything was done. So there were several cuts made through here, as well as a cut along the horizontal here to about the center, 12 inches from the center. And that windshield, her rear window was laid down. And it matches the drip rail. All the angles work. That does bother me right now. We'll get that looked after. And again, the mirrors, um, if you had, in my opinion, you had green on there, I think it'd be a bit much. You can always repaint it green. I don't know what you guys think, put it in the comments. I think the charcoal does it. Now, if you're thinking about the back not having a bumper, there is a bumper, the factory bumper, in behind all that sheet metal. So yes, if you get bumped in the back, it will mess up the bodywork, but everything is structurally safe and sound inside. The LED strip right there, as well as on the other side, need to be adhered in place. That'll be done shortly. Just have to make sure that everything worked, all the lights worked, and we're actually gonna take this car out in the evening and show you what it looks like at night. All the trim complements the rims. Those are stock Infinity rims that came with the car. We just kind of dressed them up a little bit. Didn't give them a gloss finish. Give them a kind of a satin, a little more than satin look. Uh, calipers be tilled in yellow just kind of give it an accent if we had painted this whole car green everything green except for the rims maybe silver rims but everything else green no accents it would look like the jolly green giant just green i wanted to break it up a bit just give it a pop of color here and there and the racing stripes or the stripes down the side and calipers i think accomplished that so all right guys that's pretty much it i think for all the changes can't think of anything else more to say other than uh, we should change out the plate on the front so we can get it on the street and go for a drive. How does that sound? changed out. Perfect. Let's go. Got the memory seats all dialed in. 
and you hear the acoustics sounds amazing in here nice quiet kind of refined feel refined sound but a lot of sound deadening in it doesn't sound like a tin can and with the velour, velour uh, ceiling liner really gives it a nice feel so uh, let's say we fire it up and go for a ride go around the block you know beautiful put on my driving glasses gotta look the part down straight it would have actually interfered with that latch
talking about the name for the car. After seeing the overall shape, the final look, we're going to call this car Juice Box. Think about that for a second. <laughs> it's more of a fun name. We've got some letters somewhere around here. The back trunk area. We call it the I-51S. I for infinity. 51 for the year of the car. S for sport model. Don't have your traditional throaty bo -bo -bo sound, you know, it's a little higher up. I know the younger audience, they, they're more tune, in tune with that. I'm kind of on the, on the, on the wall. Personally, I drop it down a bit. I want to take care of the windows first, get them tinted, and then, uh, then we'll see about the exhaust. You always tweak, it's a project, right? I'm sure my dad won't mind. The mirrors, I don't know if you guys might think they look a bit small, but they're actually just right. Fit the shape of the car, see everything behind you, you're comfortable. Nowadays, you got these big <laughs> TV screens for mirrors. Just look at the shape of the car, and we wanted something that looked appropriate. So, these fit the bill really well. They were sitting on the shelf for years. It's one of those things, you know, you work on cars, you accumulate parts. move. Original 51 Ford's never handled like this. You don't even feel the corners. It feels like a skateboard just Well, with the sports package, you get the heavier sway bars, springs are beefed up, and more horsepower. What a pleasure to drive. And if you want to be quiet, you can be quiet. <laughs> Just don't put your foot in the gas. Everybody loves an old car. <laughs> if only they knew. Just running about 85 kilometers an hour from American Friends. What's that? 55 ish? She doesn't sound bad at all. guys enjoyed a little drive. Hope you guys enjoy the journey of building this car. There's a little more left to do. At least we can get out, enjoy it, have some fun. Like it's effortless. You just, and it's there.
All right, so give me a second to wipe off the surface, make sure it's clean, and then we'll apply the little decals. Okay, so I'm thinking either here or down here. I think right there. Don't want it too low. I think right there. Had these made up to for the car. Yeah, I think that's gonna look good right there. We could tape it on and try it, but yeah. So let's start with the I-51. <laughs> Surface is way too smooth. First letter. With everything being nice and hot, it should stick really well. So far, so good. This is the tricky one because it's so small. Okay, and now for the S. I think the S, we're gonna set it off a little bit from the other letters. Yeah, it's gonna look good right there. Up or down? Down. Don't want it too much in the center, just off to the side, subtle. Make sure we adhere this the right way. Right there. What do you think, guys? Not too in your face, but just enough. So like I said, Infinity 51 Sport. And that's all she wrote. Later on, we'll take the car out again. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this journey of building this custom 51 Ford. If you did hit that like button, it helps us out a lot. I appreciate everybody's support along the way. Share this video with your friends. And until next time, take care.